Hello everyone. So I'd like to do a quick video on stimulants and the detox of stimulants. So we are a stimulant loving society. We like to take ourselves up but not really understanding that nature has to balance things and so any period of stimulation has to be followed by a period of depression. And one also has to ask ourselves why we are stimulating ourselves and stimulating our minds out of our natural state if we are happy with them. So maybe we're not so happy with our natural state of mind, maybe we're not so happy with where we are in our life that we have to stimulate ourselves out of depression. Not understanding the laws of nature and the laws of, in particular one, one law known as the law of dual effect, that there, every action that any agent that affects the body has, you know, there are two. The first one is temporary and the second one is lasting and opposite in nature. So with our stimulants, we get a temporary up, but get a lasting down, especially because the body then has to detox and undergo the repair and regeneration of whatever damage was done by that stimulant. So it's known as the law of dual effect. And the stimulants that we usually take in our society, the common ones, but are, you know, still psychoactive, um, are caffeine, which we find in our coffee, our chocolate and our tea, the theophylline, which we find in our tea, and the theobromine, which we also find in our chocolate. These are all, all known as xanthines, and they're a, from a class of chemical compounds known as purines. Now it's interesting that uric acid is also a purine. And um, what can we say about all these substances, about caffeine, theobromine, theophylline, and uric acid, is that they're all stimulants. So it's interesting that these are the substances that we like to take in large quantities or regularly in order to make us feel good. So yes, uric acid as well. So uric acid is found in our meat and our meat products. It's actually a byproduct of the metabolism of these types of proteins, so animal flesh. And it's also found within the flesh itself because the animal is processing its own metabolic wastes. So uric acid is found within the plasma, within the unprocessed urine flowing through the animal's tissues itself that you will take into your body. So therefore, the meat that you eat and the uric acid that you take in is stimulating. So any time you come off a stimulant, whether it be coffee, whether it be tea, whether it be chocolate, or whether it be meat, you'll suffer a depression mentally and physically. And then you'll also suffer symptoms of detox. So we reach for these things because they make us good, and we become habituated to them in order to feel good. So some of the things that caffeine does, it stimulates the adrenal glands. So it, puts us into a, it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, puts us into a state of fight or flight. So we get accelerated, we get heightened, we get um, stimulated. Increased activity, not only in the body, but also in certain centers of the brain. It increases neurotransmitter activity, serotonin, dopamine, uh, glutamate, um, acetylcholine. It stimulates all these neurotransmitters into higher activity. So of course we're going to feel more alert, we're going to feel more awakened, a heightened sense of consciousness at that sense of time, or during that period of time. It stimulates the liver to break down glycogen and release that into the bloodstream. The pancreas releases insulin, we get a shot of sugar. It stimulates um, the breakdown of fats also in the body. So we get all this energy flowing through us, puts the energy into our um, limbs for you know to deal with fight or to deal with flight. But you know it can also create inhibition in other areas. In particular, those areas which are related to parasympathetic activity, which is the opposite. But let's deal more with the sympathetic activity, the fact that it you know, releases all those neurotransmitters, so you get heightened brain function, it stimulates your adrenals into action. Um, over time, you're going to find that there's um, a fatigue or a wearing down, especially if we're not following a great diet. We're not getting in the nutrients required to regenerate these centers. The, the, um, the adrenals get low on vitamin C, they get low on phosphorus, they get low on other minerals. So does the brain. 
caffeine goes directly through the blood-brain barrier because it's fat soluble and water soluble and into the brain and so does its derivatives so you know caffeine found in a plant naturally is actually used by the plant as an insecticide so it's a toxin but poisons stimulate the body into activity because that activity is the body's attempt to detoxify it and then neutralize it pass it out of the body so um, it's something that we need to think about yes we feel good when we have it but how long do we feel good for especially if we stop taking it so as the adrenals get fatigued see the adrenals are part of what's known as the HPA axis or the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal gland axis so that axis of action that system in the body is very important for modulating our immune system and endocrine function um, neurological function in particular the seat of consciousness with the pineal gland and the function between the pituitary gland the hypothalamus and the pineal gland which is our seat of consciousness and higher awareness and as the adrenals become depleted all these activities become compromised and in particular, um, the states, levels of awareness, consciousness we can possibly, possibly or potentially achieve with our minds, with our brains. It's food for thought. You know, wanting, you know, it's the most commonly, caffeine is the most commonly used psychoactive substance in the world. It's legal. But are we suffering? And, and in fact, you look, most of the healers I've spoken to, if you look across the world today, we're all suffering from adrenal stress and exhaustion and then for you know we're suffering from nervous system disorders and immunological disorders brain disorders dementia all these things wearing out the receptors and wearing out the centers in the brain that produce neurotransmitters and we tend to think that we're immune to this but chances are people aren't getting quality nutrition and chances are people aren't getting enough rest so one of the things that happens when you eat these things they have to be neutralized and so they're detoxed or transformed into uric acid. One of the reasons why uric acid is a stimulant is because it's also a purine, just like caffeine, theobromine, theophylline, and these things, these xanthines, are neutralized by an enzyme called xanthine oxidase into uric acid. Now, uric acid builds up in the bloodstream. We, we pass out about 70% through the kidneys. But if you have a kidney disorder or a kidney disease, or even if you have a liver disorder, then the the metabolization or the metabolism of these compounds is going to be compromised. You're going to burden the liver more, you're going to burden the kidneys more, you're going to get an acidosis or a buildup in the bloodstream of uric acid. And it's going to leach minerals, alkaline minerals from your body in order to neutralize those into alkaline or mineral urates. And these are going to be distributed throughout the body because the body is also going to have a hard time eliminating those and you end up with gout or arthritic disorders, rheumatism, you know, autoimmune disorders throughout the tissues, impingement of the nerves, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, other nervous system disorders, all because of this general acidosis and this buildup. We as anthropoid primates do not eliminate um, or do not, cannot neutralize uric acid. We don't have that enzyme uricase anymore. Carnivores do, we don't. So we shouldn't be eating foods high in uric acid, which are meats, and which are those stimulants. Um, we also don't produce the enzyme to create ascorbic acid or vitamin C in our body. So therefore, therefore we have to eat foods high in vitamin C, which are fruits and vegetables, which are low in uric acid. In fact, they don't have uric acid. So a diet high in fruits and vegetables and low in uric acid, or not or minus uric acid is an optimal diet for us. Uric acid actually functions, can function as a antioxidant in our body, just like vitamin C. But it's naturally produced uric acid through our own metabolism. We don't need to go adding it in our diets, you know, from outside sources such as meat um, or from other stimulants, which also have d other harmful or deleterious effects, injurious effects on in our body. So that is food for thought. Yes, we are stimulated by our meats. So, and they make us feel good. And when we stop having those things, we're going to feel the effects. We're going to feel the effects of headache. So when we detox from caffeine, theophylline, theobromine, then we actually get 
headaches because the, especially if the kidneys can't handle it, if your kidneys are having trouble keeping up with that load, then you'll get the effects of purine headache. So drink lots of water, get lots of rest. One thing I have noticed when I have been detoxing from the effects of caffeine is if I get more sleep, then I often don't get headaches. But if you're sleep deprived, and the more sleep deprived you are, and the more rest deprived you are, you'll get nasty headaches. So that's something to think about, people. I hope that was helpful. A lot of people say those things are beneficial, but do we need to be taking things that are harmful in order to, in order to derive a benefit? It somehow doesn't make sense to me. I'll leave you with a saying by Herbert Shelton, who was a very famous hygienist, and he said, false joys shorten life and impair health at the same time that they rob us of our power to enjoy. So I'll leave you to think on that one for a while. So have fun, take care. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very soon again. Bye-bye.